a nation based on war. Hi everyone, this is Tatiana Moroz and I'm at the MBTC here in Melbourne, Australia with probably my favorite person in Melbourne, Australia, Dale Dickens, who made it basically possible for me to come out here. Uh, she invited me, Andreas, Pamela, and really facilitated everything um, moving forward on our trip to Australia to make sure that we got to meet with everybody in the community, not only here in Melbourne, but in Sydney. Um, in between that wonderful, gracious hosting, she has also created the Bitcoin Daco, which I haven't seen the rise and rise of Bitcoin, but forget that movie. This is a real ticket for you people. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was really great. I'm going to show it to my family who hates Bitcoin, but will now love it because of this beautiful, fantastic creature. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me today. A long intro. Thanks, Tatiana. It's been so much fun having you here as well. It's been really cool having a piece of New York in Melbourne. Very well, cool, yeah. We've been having a really, really good time. We're out in St. Kilda. Um, but aside from our socializing, our interacting with the Bitcoin community, why don't you tell people a little bit about why you got involved in Bitcoin in the first place, other than to hang out with cool people? Um, anarchi anarchism, I think, yeah. A bit of an anarchist at heart. And uh, the Wiki WikiLeaks. I loved WikiLeaks. And when I heard that they were accepting Bitcoin, that was it. I was just like, this has to be good. No banks. And I learned a lot about open source. I love open source. And it just fit, ticked all the boxes for me. So yeah, I got some. It's great. Wait, what about the regular people that think of anarchists as people that just throw Molotov cocktails around and are just wild and crazy? How do you, uh, how do you explain that philosophy to them? Because that might be a little bit disturbing to some people. Yeah, it is. I'm, well, I use that probably because it's the closest to what I am. But I think, to really, I'm a sovereign. I'm a sovereign um, being, and I challenge any author authority. I have an issue with authority. So that's been a, yeah, an issue for me <laughs> for my whole life. I don't know if it's an issue. I think it could be a bonus. Okay, yeah, there, there you go. It'll be a bonus. I'll use it as a bonus. Excellent. So what prompted you to make the, the Bitcoin Daco, and why Melbourne? I mean, obviously, you're from here, but what do you think is unique about this culture? I, like I've traveled a lot around the world and I didn't find many cities that have as many different cultures living together successfully and I know there's conflict like I know a lot of people don't get on and there's still class wars and things but generally as a general rule of thumb Melbourne people get on really well and you'll see Asians Indians Jewish people like Africans everybody kind of gets on well and I think that's a great dropping point for technology. So if you, my theory is that if you land any technology in Melbourne, we'll spread it out really quickly. We've got the world at our fingertips, quite literally. So it's a great testing ground for new technology, and I think we can really give Bitcoin a good boost here. Yeah. So uh, you and Eileen are going to be doing a debut of her Silk Road book, and then the first part of the Bitcoin doco. How is that going to be distributed? Because you have how many parts of it and, and are people just going to be able to watch online or how are you planning on doing that distribution besides the party? Okay. Um, so we've got it on Vimeo for one month and then we're putting it on YouTube for um, we're breaking it down into three different sections, so three 10-minute sections and we may have some advertising then. And we're looking at with the interviews that we've got with the extras of selling them in packages so there'll be like a special on wallets or identity theft or um, the blockchain or mining, whatever. So getting like little sub docu documentaries together and selling that to people. Excellent. What other projects are you working on? I, I have been in your home. I know that you have a million different things, but what are you going to work on post the Bitcoin doco? Well, there's another project happening called the Lonnie Launch, which is in Launceston. There's a guy down there who's been quite lonesome by himself, not many Bitcoin people. He came to Melbourne and Sydney to get his boost of energy. And he got me and Jason to come down a couple of months ago and we created the Lonnie Launch, which is 50 businesses to register by Bitcoin Black Friday, which is this Friday. So we're going down for a party um, to see him there. And I'm also working on another project, a global project, which I can't really say much about now, but I'm really excited about getting involved in the marketing of that, yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, so where can people catch up with you? Where can people find out more about the documentary? Okay, well, you can catch up with me on madinmelbourne.com.au. At the moment, all that is is the Bitcoin Space Cadet. But I want to tell you about the Bitcoin Space Cadet. The, the Space Cadet is going to be like, he's an animated character that's going to teach people about cryptocurrencies. He's kind of floating out in the orbit. So you, on your screen on the laptop, you'll just see him's going to be nap, tapping on the window like, hey, you why are you still using your bank? What's that? I can see in there. What's that cash? 
don't you know about Bitcoin yet? So that's the plan with the Bitcoin Space Cadet. Um, so you can contact me there, dale at madinmelbourne.com.au. And then there's also the Bitcoin Doco. So dale at the bitcoindoco.com.au. And Twitter, Mad in Melbourne. I love Twitter. So my handle there is at Mad in Melbourne. And yeah, tweet me there. That's the best way to contact me. Excellent. So I hope that people at home go and go to Vimeo and find out more about the documentary because I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much for being a wonderful hostess and for making all of this possible. I don't think that should be understated. Dale is an incredible person, and I feel very fortunate that we got to be friends. Oh, it's been so much fun, really. Like, you've really opened up my world, what's happening um, around the rest of the world with the people. I feel like I've connected with the people a lot um, deeper just through you you're talking about them. It's really cool. Like, I want to meet them. And 2015 is definitely travel. I know. Well, we're we're going to do a house trade somehow. That's right. Yeah. And Cairns as well. We're going to do Cairns. Oh, yeah. We're going to try and do a Cairns Christmas. I don't even know what that's going to look like. But we're going to give it a shot. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, See you later. Absolutely.